this uh, Fuzzy Ego Pro E, it says on the front here, you can see it probably, but uh, it's a socket 7 system from what I understand. We're gonna open it. Probably seen better days. From what I understood, it has three of these systems, and this one isn't working. It's upgraded with some socket 7 CPU, K62 plus, I think, or ordinary K62. But uh, nowadays it doesn't work at all, apparently. Just uh, a postcard like this shows nothing but a straight line, so that's. nothing happens. So it's dead. And here's two more of these, so the thing is, this is a Siemens system, the motherboard is a Siemens, and you can kind of see like there's a riser card here, very similar, and a motherboard. Might require some modifications, but we think we can put this socket 7 board in here. So we'll have to see here, how much I have to modify. So the plan is to strip this down, this power supply has been tested. And since the same manufacturer, this is Ordner AT, like the motherboard is AT, and we have tested the, the power supply, this, the, the voltages are what it's supposed to be, and they were well within 10% of, like, say, AT extended. This is AT, but I think it's 10% on, uh, on the AT, like the early AT. So, 5 volt is fine, 12 volt is fine, so on. So, there's something with the motherboard on this system. But nothing's gonna be thrown away, it's gonna be. Uh, spare parts for the other systems, or if it can be repaired, put back if he wants to in the future. But right now, we're gonna try to see if we can put the other system in here. So, I should probably take this out first. The problem is, the rise for the other system is different, so. That's the front fan. Probably I'm gonna do some cleaning here because it's all very dirty. I'm hoping like this lines up somewhat we can maybe we can even move this over from this board to the other one and then I'll check closer later. But hopefully this board will drop in easily. We might have to do some new standoffs in worst case, but that's fine. So we're back here, the case it is cleaned and we're gonna mount the motherboard.
board is a bit longer than the other one, so there are some, some hooks over here that uh, seems to be intended for longer while the water keep them in place. I'm not going to screw it in place. We have checked that this power supply works, but there is a slight issue. I mentioned, probably mentioned this cable before. It doesn't fit there, and, and uh, from what I measured, it's not the same. So, if we hook this up using the power, Strictly needed. It's optional. Three volts. Three point three volts. So up the, yeah. Now, have tested this on another motherboard. If you hook this up now, so push the button. There's no fan spin and nothing. So I pull this out of the other motherboard. And if this is not connected, it won't run. So, after some measurements, pushing in, like uh, having the button in the on position, this is grounded, this, the back one. And this seems to be positive around 5 volts or so. So, I have these uh, 1000 ohm resistors, 1K. So, what I figured out was that I uh, have. Both of these positives seems to be need to be grounded. So I've got the ground over here. So I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna do like this. Take this one over here. So I'm gonna connect it. So and this one goes from ground to the other side. Out. Bend this over a bit, it clears. So I think it should work. So basically, I have ground here, and then I go over to either one of these two. And both of these seems to need to be grounded. And you don't just want to make a short like with a wire because, well, bad things can happen. And these are a thousand ohms, like I said. And uh, like the amount of current that can flow with a thousand ohm is almost nothing. It's uh, I would say like twenty ohms is probably around at five volt. At five volts, if you're like twenty ohm, that, that's probably like a watt or two, something like that. I I do it on top of my head, but anyway, pull, plug this in. And now if we hit the button, I think we should have live. Yeah, the fan spin. So you can see complaints about no bootable device. So yeah, it's in a boot loop right now, but this proves it works. The next problem now that's disconnected. The next problem we have, because there's always problems doing stuff like this, it's the risers. The first one I know about is the fact that this is the front. And this is the back, and this doesn't have anything at the back. This has. The next problem is the height difference here. So these slots are like in between the original ones, so they're never gonna line up here. The next problem I noticed is that this one sits further back. The height problem, and we have a. And we have. A depth problem here. Now, with some metal work, we could make an adapter, I think, that would go on here. So, can, so that would go screw on here, go into these notches here. So we basically make like a spacer. Thing is, we still need to cut these small ribbons over here if we do that. And to make it uh, like, so we can actually connect things to the cards. So I'm gonna look into making like an adapter. And I would probably have to modify 
this piece because uh, this piece can't hold the, the, the riser anyway because this riser is somewhat lower than the original one in the system. So we'll see what we can do about that. The thing is we really don't, as long as you actually have a card or something screwed in and that sits there, you really don't need riser support that much. So it might not be a big deal. Yeah, it's exactly 50-50 split. So we can use that to figure out the height difference. Let the 50-50, I can see it from, from the rear here, that this card exactly ends up in the middle of two cards on the old riser. So something like that, that's... Uh, 13 and a half millimeters, so it's just above half an inch is the depth difference. So that's how well how deep we need to make the depth there. And then we need a diff half of the this distance here is always the same as should be. So we need half of that. The height difference and this is actually 20 millimeters. So it means 10 millimeters, which is so that means just that's like two fifths of an inch, I think. Yep. So yeah, I'm thinking we make like a like a adapter that uh, uses these two screw holes here and uses these here. So it's basically like a second uh, opening like this that you slot in, which has similar openings uh, for the for the for the ISA and PCI cards. So you can remove that if you want, but you still we still need to cut out these pieces in between if you want to make that work. So yeah, I think that has to be the plan to do that adapter first, because the way you can still remove that adapter and put. Restore the system. The only thing you can't really restore is these pieces in between, but they're strictly not necessary. Like from it's only from for originality and aesthetics. So and I know for a fact it doesn't have any other case this would fit in. Plus, um, any case you would pick that isn't original would probably require modification. So. It's always that. So we're back again. We made an adapter here. It's gonna go like so, and it gets screwed in over here on this side with the old holes for the add-on cards. So these notches go in here, and they screw it in here to these two here, and your new cards goes here. So, I also made some uh, changes to this one, to get a piece here, because that will uh, hit the riser otherwise. Also remove the, the, uh, the lower hard drive bay here, because that will hit the back side of the riser here, so now that clears. So yeah. And I removed a piece here that because that also hits, uh, I think it hits this bracket here somewhere, like so. Now there's no way to mount this, like the old one went all the way up in here. I think. The old one goes up like so and locks into place there. This one is shorter, so it stops around there I think. Somewhere like so. So what we have to do is add some padding. I think we'll put something here. Let's put some padding over here. So isolating it so that if you push a card in you don't push this thing against here. And be unlucky to have it resting against here. Uh, there won't be anything holding you from pulling this this like this but uh, the owner will know that 
we could make some could extend could extend this piece down and could weld something on for example but uh, yeah I think it's gonna sit quite firmly anyway with two ISA cards in here I think it should sit really well okay I'm back here again I have uh, tapped the holes here I won't tap before uh, and I removed the, the pieces in between here. So, otherwise, like VGA, not, not VGA, you probably won't use that, but like the network card port and the port for the sound guard is gonna, would have come out in the middle of these metal pieces here. So, but with this new piece here, I think it should look fine. And you can still restore it to original, more or less. Obviously, this aesthetically speaking would be visible. Uh, you would uh, miss the hard drive cage here, here, but like I said, it has multiple of these systems. And I think most are not working actually. So yeah. Let's start by putting the motherboard back in. This first. So let's start after. As we can see, it's extremely sturdy once in place, but that won't go anywhere. So now this thing needs to go in. So, the eye out to the front later, I'm gonna do some measurements, look at other motherboard, so figure out the power. Power is linear, probably you can take it from like the power supply part literally, but the hard drive LED. And I look at the front two, there are three LEDs, I think one is standby, but we don't use that. So. Now we need to sort this out. How this fits now, because we need to paint this thing with some, uh, something not conductive. So. But at least it goes down there. But like I said, it can touch. So we need to look at that. So we need something here. and the PCI, that's gonna be a tough one. Crack. Mm -hmm. so. Could obviously have welded a piece here to shut, uh, close that and so on and so on, but I had to borrow uh, uh, welding equipment and so on. I really don't want to overdo it. So, I think that should work. And you can add another card or put a piece in the top. We have to take this out again, this one. Then to put a hard drive in. Should be doable. Like so. Yeah. 
just will go like that and it should have been an issue I hope. So floppy and hard drive and then drop the gloves under here later. I think it's down. Yes. The only thing left to do now in terms of getting it up and running is this adapter on here. And I have a plan for that. My plan here is to use this uh, fan adapter. It's just a resistor here to lower the voltage, probably from a Nukta. So I figured I just cut it off here. So you can use these three wires and the two 1K resistors and some shrink wrappers on to uh, make a good safe adapter.
So there's our adapter then. Should allow us to run it as a traditional latest power supply. So everything is hooked up. So let's hope it works there now. I have disabled the Windows logo with my boot menu before, you can do that. That's why you don't see it. Okay, is so the network cable fully attached again? Probably not, it's very sticky that fork. I think it's all the way in now. Oh, we need a CPU fan too. The old one, the old case has a fan in the front, like a 40mm. I don't know why they would go so small even on a 486, but... Oh, a socket zip, I think it's socket zip. It's really small. Figure, do we have that connected? And uh, we need something on this Pentium CPU's passive cooler. Like if the fan was 80mm in the front, we wouldn't need this, but... Uh, I found this, I think it is 50 or 60, but that should be 60, I think. Oh, it's 50. I don't know where they come from, but uh, yeah. So my plan here was to add the disconnector from the adapter we used before, uh, the, the female one left over. I'm actually going to have to figure out where plus or minus is on the motherboard, but we can fix that later. Right now we just want to... Uh, Soldered these together, so to the case fan is to just a two pole uh, female and then we put this on here once I know it's plus and minus on the motherboard try to measure now Anywhere. Just make sure. 
before we get the polarity right. It looks right. So let's see if we have fan spin down on some cooling. That's nice, case fan and CP fan. So, we need to make an adapter for the IO panel, uh, for the LEDs. And I have measured a little bit and it seems like it's 5 volt out of the front LED port. It says LED, LEDs on the motherboard. And uh, I did make a LED with uh, one of, uh, basically one of these, so I can test. And, 5 volt isn't particularly good for 2 volt LED, so I assume, from what I can see, the front LEDs are probably 2 volts also. I can't see any resistors, so we're gonna make gonna add these 180 milli, 180 ohms resistors. Uh, I, I looked at the numbers, and for 2 volt, uh, 2 volt LED and a 5 volt source, we, and we assume 20 milliamps. That that should be 150 ohms. These are 180 closest I had, so they should work fine, I think. That way they don't burn out the LEDs in the front panel. That would be annoying. Those to hold it in place for the glue sets. And then we can try it out. The adapter's in here. Uh, yep, and you can see the hard drive LED is, uh, the power LED is working. So we're gonna boot Windows now at the prompt here. And the hard drive LED seems to be going too. So here we are then, everything is working and assembled, 
We got a working hard drive, floppy, optical drive, we got a working network card, sound card, mouse drivers, we got VSA 2.0 support, we got CPU cooling, case cooling, uh, adapter for the power supply and for the front LED, so everything is so everything can work. So yeah. Only thing left to do now is put the cover on and uh, do some benchmark. I've been told to do some benchmark on it, so that's next. So yeah, let's put the cover on then. So let's run some benchmarks now. That's like a fast 486, 133, I think. some doom here. It has some 38 real takes, but it's a uh, really fast 486 at 132 megahertz can do under 2000. Uh, probably like a DX420, something like that. So, Pentium 60 megahertz. Pentium 66, so it seems to add up. And we got a DX33 below at 71.2. I think my DX4100 overdrive does. Uh, it's pretty similar to 190. So DX4 is just around 200, you would take. DX4, uh, DX4100. Seventy five point four six megabytes per second memory bandwidth. Uh, if you have thirty pin SIMs on your four eighty six with some bias tweaks, you usually get around somewhere around thirty plus. Uh, with this, with seventy two pin FPM, which this probably is running or Edo, uh, looking at like hundred to hundred and ten and a half for socket three four eighty six. On like say a hundred or hundred and thirty four eighty six. Bottom right corner you can see the read re, right now read, read speeds. The L1 cache, L2 cache and memory. So L1 cache is eight kilobytes. And we've got two hundred and fifty six kilobytes of L2. And according to the CPU graph, we're scoring similar scores on an AM5X86133, which is a 486 with a 4x multiplier from AMD. 
So the 5x86 is kind of misleading. And here is moving data. So that's almost like well over 200 megabytes per second on the L1. Probably around 80 or so on the L2. I would guess around 25 maybe on the memory. So, hard drive speed, buffer read speed is 2.5 megabytes per second, so that's similar to like a 4A6. But that's to be expected from Pi mode and no DMA support. Linear read speed, so I'm 2.5 megabytes per second. Let's try some quick time demo here. Sixteen point two FPS. So most four A six I tried like fourteen fifteen maybe at hundred thirty three megahertz, but you can you can match this with a four A six. But uh, yeah the Pentium is about twice as fast uh, at the same clock speed. And next be benchmark is Win297. Uh, the owner asked me to run it, so let's do that. Red one is uh, 486 at 133 megahertz. This is a Pentium at 60. And this is a DX266. DX4 100. And this is, is integers. Floating point. Yeah. Pentium is very strong at floating points. Just, it's just barely outpaces the. 133 mega 486 so it's more than twice as fast on floating points it's a D, the DX266 here DX4100 yeah 486 with SCSI drive and this is the Pentium with IDE and this is a 66 mega 486 and this is the D, DX4100 Memory I.O. So now there is the 486 and the red one. Pentium. That's average read speeds, average write, average copy. There aren't that many options in this bias to tune the memory. That's always a problem with uh, brand of OEM systems.
Otherwise, it's actually quite similar here to a 486 at 133. It's even outpacing it in some of the areas here. So overall, very even. Right is not really low, apparently. I have to have a look in the BIOS, but I don't think there's anything I can change to make this any better. But anyway, that is it. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I will end the video here with some uh, footage of the computer playing some games. If you like to watch that, you can keep watching, otherwise this will be the end of the video.